In this video we're going to look at how layers and bitmasks work, how they're relevant to physics and cameras, and how to use them. We're also going to look at the user-friendly version that is the layer mask. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here's what we want to learn in this video. I have this nice character here that I can move him around, and as you can see, he is pointing towards the mouse position. If I click, I can shoot, and over here on the floor, you can see some debris, and if I move towards it, you can see that I can push it around, okay? Then over here, there's a crate which acts like a solid object, so I cannot go through it. And if I shoot, you can see that my shooting interacts with the crate. However, in here in the debris, my shooting goes past the debris since it is on the floor. And then in here, I have a nice teammate, and in front of him, a zombie. And if I shoot, there you go, I don't want my game to have friendly fire, so my shooting is correctly ignoring him and only hitting the zombie. Alright, so these are all the interactions that we want to make. So, let's learn about layers, physics, bit masks, and layer masks. So, game objects are placed in layers, and that impacts various systems in Unity. Over here, I have the player game object. And if we go here in the inspector, you can see that it is currently on the layer player. If I click on the drop down, you can see all the layers that are defined in this project. Layers are used for many things, like for example for camera rendering. So in here I have my main camera, and in here you can see the culling mask, and if we click it, we can see all the layers that the camera is currently rendering. So right now it's rendering everything, as you can see over here. My player, the friendly, the enemy, the crate, and the debris. And if I go here and I untick the player, there you go, now the player, he's still there, but he's now completely invisible. So the camera no longer renders anything that is on the layer called player. So with this, you could have, for example, different cameras rendering different objects and doing some sort of post-processing or capturing a screenshot without a background. So that's one of the possible uses for layers. Another one that is very important is when dealing with physics. So over here, I have this create object and if we inspect, we can see that this one is on the layer objects. And here, if I move my player, which is using the physics system, and I try to move, and there you go, I cannot go through the box. However, I can go into Edit, Project Settings, and over here is the Physics 2D. And in here, you can see a very nice layer collision matrix. So this is what defines if a specific layer interacts with another layer. So in this case, let's go down here and locate the player and then in here locate the objects, and now untick, and let's say that the player and the objects should not collide. So let's see that. Here I am, and I move, and yep, there you go, now I can go straight through the box. So with this, you can customize layer physics interactions as much as you need. Right, awesome. So that's the basics of layers. Now let's see how we can interact with them through code. Over here is my player script. How it works isn't relevant to this video, but it's relatively simple. All that matters is over here an update function, and all it's doing is handling the movement and the shooting. So here you can see when I press the left mouse button down, I play the shooting animation and I do some effects. So let's see that. So here I am and I press, and yep, there you go, there's my player shooting. Now in here, let's try to shoot the crate, and there you go, I'm shooting right over the crate. The reason is because we're not doing any raycasts, we're just showing the sprite directly towards the mouse position. However, we do want our bolts to hit something, so let's deal with that. Over here in the shooting code, let's do a nice raycast. So a raycast, we go into the physics 2D, and we simply call raycast. This one takes an origin, so let's use the gun endpoint position. Then it takes a direction, so let's use the aim direction. And finally, it takes a distance. So in here, let's calculate the distance between the gun endpoint position and the target position. All right, so here we have our raycast being done, and this one returns a raycast hit 2D, which contains information on what happened with the ray. So one of the things that it contains is the raycast hit 2D, we can check if it has a collider. So if the collider is not null, then that means that we hit something. And if it is null, then we hit nothing. So if we did collide into something, let's make sure we modify our target position to match where it actually hits something. So we set the target position 
to be on where we hit. So on the raycast hit, and we can use the point. This contains the point on the collider that the raycast hit. All right, so just like this, we should be able to see our shooting correctly hit the crate. Let's see. Okay, here we are now, shoot normal. Yep, still works, shoot the crate. And yep, there you go, as you can see, I cannot shoot past the crate. If I click behind the crate, there you go, only there. Now in here it goes, 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 and hit. Okay, awesome. However, you can already see an issue, which is, yeah, it works great on the crate, but over here I have some debris and the goal is just to step on it and push it away. But if I shoot, and there you go, they are acting as hitboxes as well. Now the debris are meant to be on the ground, so they're just visual, so that I can push them and the bullets are meant to go past them. So this is where later interactions come in. We want to be able to hit the crate since it is a high object, but the debris on the floor, we want to be able to shoot over it. Over here, you can see the layers are already nicely set up. So the crate in here is on the objects layer, but the debris is on the debris layer. So we want our raycast to hit things on the object layer, but ignore the ground debris layer. Now back in the code, in order to do that, we can go here and inspect the other versions of the raycast. And there you go, one of them takes a layer mask. So this is what we need to use in order to identify which layers we should collide with. And now in here, there are two ways we can do this. One is very simple and editor based and another is more complex and code based. So let's start with the simple one. All the way up here, let's define a serialized field and this will be of type layer mask. And let's call it layer mask. So this is the default Unity struct that already contains a default editor script. So we can go back to the editor and in here on the player script, we can see right here the layer mask. And if we click, there you go, we have a nice drop down where we can select a bunch of layers. So here we can select them just like we did for the camera. So in this case, let's hit everything except the debris layer. All right, that should do it, let's test. Okay, here we are, now let's click. And okay, shooting normally still works. Click on the crate. And yep, I'm hitting the crate and now the debris. And yep, there you go, I am shooting over the debris. So there you go, I can push it around, I can shoot over it, and it hits on the crate. And if we pause, we can go here and modify it. Now let's say hit the debris, but do not hit the objects. And we see, and there you go, the debris is hitting, and the objects are going past. Right, awesome. So here you can see how the layer mask is extremely useful for easily setting the layers that you want to test. However, it definitely helps to understand what sort of magic is happening behind here. Now the way it works is with what is called a bit mask. So essentially this layer mask gets converted into an int. You can see here on this function that indeed we require an int. Now an int, as you may know, is made up of four bytes, which equals 32 bits. And if we go here onto the layer inspector, you can see it's not a coincidence that we have exactly 32 layers. So this is the reason why. An int has 32 bits, which means 32 ones and zeros, and the mask simply sets certain bits to one and leaves the others at zero. So over here, we can add a nice debug log to see the binary representation of our current layer mask. So we do a debug.log. So let's visualize the layer mask in binary. And there it is, exactly like that. You can see only one bit is set to one and that is the object's layer. So we can count it from the right. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if we pause and go in here, there you go, our objects are indeed on layer nine. So you can see exactly how a layer mask works behind the scenes. So now that we know how they work, let's see how we can do them manually. Now, the way we're going to do it is by using the bitwise operators. You have OR, AND, NOT, exclusive OR, and SHIFT. These allow us to do logic working with the underlying bits. So in this case, let's define an int for a bit mask. And the easiest way to collide with a single layer is we take the value one and we shift it to the left by the number of the layer. So our objects were on layer nine, so we shift to the left by nine. Okay, so let's test this and use it in here. Okay, let's see. And here you can see the layer mask is indeed correct exactly as previously. And if we shoot, we can shoot past that and we hit on the crate. Right, awesome. Now let's set up the bit mask to hit both the crate and the debris. So in here, you can see the crate is on layer nine, debris is on layer 10. So in here, the way that we hit multiple layers is by doing an OR. So we shift the one by nine, or we shift the one by 10. 
So if you know how binary works or just basic logic gates, you know that an OR will return a 1 if either position is 1. So that means that using a 1, we are essentially adding to our bitmask. So we're going to have a 1 on the position 9 and a 1 on the position 10. Let's see. Okay, so here it is, and you can see indeed we have two ones exactly like that. So we can shoot and hit the crate and shoot and hit the debris. All right, awesome. So now let's see how we can make shooting everything except the crate and debris. So the way that we do that is by using the not bitwise operator, which is a tilde. So what essentially this does is flip all the bits. So we're first going to do what we were doing previously, which is the objects layer or the debris layer. And then we are simply inverting the whole thing. So we should be able to see our bit mask full of ones, except for two zeros. Let's see. And there it is exactly as intended. We have everything full of ones, except those two zeros. So we are not going to hit the crate, not going to hit debris, but we are going to hit our teammate and also our zombie. All right, great. So this is pretty much how you create layer masks using bitwise operators. So now that you understand this, you should be able to understand how the layer mask works behind the scenes. As always with programming, there is no magic involved. Everything has a logic to it. Now in here, let's define our rules. So in here, I have defined it in order to hit everything except on the debris layer. So let's see. And here it is. And if I shoot, yep, I'm hitting the crate. Okay, everything's good. Now on debris, and yep, I'm shooting over the debris. So I can push for the debris and hit the crate. Okay, great. However, we have one issue. Over here, I have my teammate, and I don't actually want to have friendly fire. However, if I click, yep, there you go. My poor teammate is getting hit before I can hit the zombie. So for our rules, we want to hit the crate, but not the debris, and the enemy, but not the friendly. So over here, we have our layers. So we want to hit layer 9, the objects but not hit layer 10, which is debris. And then we want to hit layer 12, which is the enemy, but not the friendly, which is 11. So here we want to make sure that our raycast hits everything except on the debris layer and the friendly layer. So let's try doing this using the AND bitwise operation. So let's first start off by hitting everything except on the debris layer. So we do one shifted by the debris layer and we invert this. All right, so here we have a bit mask with one on everywhere except on the debris layer. And now we also want to not hit on the front layer. So we use the AND, and again, we do the same thing. We invert a one shifted by the friendly layer. So when doing an AND, as you know, it only returns one if both are one. So where either one is zero, they won't have zero. All right, so let's see if this is working. We should be able to hit everything except the debris layer and the friendly layer. Okay, here we are, move around, let's see the crate. Yep, we are correctly hitting the crate. Let's see the debris, and we are correctly going above the debris, all right, and we can still push, great. And now let's see here if we're going to shoot our friendly or the enemy, and click, and there you go, we are now hitting the enemy, and our shooting is ignoring our friendly. All right, awesome. So here we have all our rules set up. Now again, let's just use the Unity Provide Layer Mask to achieve the same result. So here on the Player and Layer Mask, let's make sure that we hit everything except on the debris and except on the friendly. So here's our layer mask. And let's see, and yep, we can shoot the crate. Yep, we shoot above it. And let's see here my friendly. And there you go, I can shoot past the friendly. So just like that, all of our rules are correctly working. So the layer masks are really easy to use and now you know how they work behind the scenes. With knowledge of layers, layer masks, and bit masks, you can now play around and make some really interesting physics interactions or really cool effects using cameras and separate layers. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.